Thank you for inviting me <coughs> to speak. Uh, let's see. Okay. So uh, I'll review the uh, restoration of site with uh, photovoltaic retinal prosthesis. Um, just to remind you, the eye is amazing optical uh, system with a 100 uh, megapixel camera, basically, in each eye, 100 me million photoreceptors that uh, transition the signal through the neurotransmission into bipolar and then ganglion cell, compressing it to 1 million axons going to the brain. Uh, so there is a lot of signal processing built into the three layer structures uh, between photoreceptors, bipolar cells, and ganglion cells, where compression goes by a factor of 100 in terms of signal uh, receiving cells to signal outputting cells. Uh, the signal transduction begins with absorption of light in uh, outer segments of photoreceptors, which changes intercellular potential, and this uh, releases, uh, changes the rate of release of neurotransmitters, and the signal is processed in bipolar cells in analog fashion, and then in ganglion cells uh, becomes digital signal where everything is encoded in action potentials of standard amplitude and duration, and all the information is encoded in number of spikes and their timing. So it's digital signal that is delivered through million axons uh, into optic nerve into the brain. Uh, in retinal degeneration, the photoreceptors and RP cells die out, and two retinal, uh, inner retinal uh, layers, uh, processing basically layers in a nuclear layer and ganglion cell layer survive for many years, and uh, even though they rewire, the cell bodies actually remain in place. So in uh, uh, there are two approaches to restoration of sight. Uh, one is to place a stimulating array on the retinal surface and uh, stimulate electrically the output cascade of the retina, ganglion cells. Um, and the leading uh, player in this field is a company called Second Sight in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, they have a video cam uh, camera that uh, uh, captures the signal, then it is transmitted, process signal from the receiving, uh, emitting coil into receiving coil and planted in the subconjunctival space. The signal is decoded and delivered to 60 electrodes placed on the retina. Um, even though there are only 60 electrodes, uh, uh, the, it, it turns out that it was sufficient for patients to actually read large fonts, and last year was revolutionary in this field, which basically transitions this whole field from science fiction to clinical reality. We're in a multicentral clinical trial. 30 patients were implanted, profoundly blind, 30 years actually blind, and 23 of them could re read large fonts. The equivalent visual acuity was quite low, 20 over 1,200, corresponding to pixel spacing of 30, 300 microns. Uh, the, another approach is subretinal, where you place stimulating array in place of photoreceptors and stimulate the first layer of cells after photoreceptors, bipolar cells. And then uh, we count on transmission from the cells uh, through normal synaptic connections to uh, ganglion cells, uh, generating bursts of spiking more uh, uh, similar to uh, normal retinal uh, signal processing. Um, the company leading in this field in terms of clinical trials is called Retina Implant AG in Tübingen, Germany. Their system is radically different from second side. They have actually subretinal camera with 1,500 pixels. And uh, uh, it's a CMOS array that basically receives a signal in each pixel and amplifies with uh, differential amplifiers and produces current that flows through the um, uh, tissue uh, stimulating nearby cells. Because it's a video camera, it requires a lot of power, and this cable going from the retina through the sclera under the skin and then through transdermal connection outside is uh, very complex. And the implantation actually involves not only ophthalmologists, but also neurosurgeon. And uh, um, there were 10 uh, people uh, implanted. And this is actually best patient. Uh, his name is Mike, uh, Micah. And uh, his visual acuity, surprisingly, and this is the best patient, was very similar, 20 over 1,200 to just 60 electrodes implanted with, second, uh, with the implant of second side. So it tells us that basically not only number of pixels matters, but uh, there are other factors that limit uh, uh, information flow. Uh, so what is the number of pixels that corresponds to different levels of visual acuity? A normal chart of visual acuity is a normal vision 2020 corresponds to uh, frequency on the retina of 10 microns, and 2200, which is the definition of legal blindness in the U.S., corresponds to uh, 100 uh, micrometer uh, 
uh, period on the retina, which corresponds to 50 micrometer pixels uh, with two pixels per cycle. Um, in terms of image quality, this is uh, approximately the image quality you will get with uh, uh, visual acuity of 20 over 1,200 with a pixel spacing 300 microns. And this image is composed of 130 pixels with um, 10 times more pixels, uh, 2,400, and pixel spacing 100 microns. You probably will start recognizing that these uh, are human faces. And uh, with uh, visual acuity 20 over 120 with pixel size of 30 microns, it is uh, pretty good vision, certainly sufficient for reading and, space rec and face recognition. And this is where our technology stops because with 30 micrometer pixel, electrode will be about 10 microns, which is a SOMA size, and making it smaller than that doesn't help. Um, uh, so for uh, driving in California, you need 2400 and a uh, 2040 vision, which is a pixel size 10 microns. And as I said, it's beyond the current level of technology. Uh, so in our approach, the system uh, is the following. There is a camera capturing the image. It's processed in a pocket uh, computer, like iPhone size, and then delivered uh, to the video goggles, which uh, many of you uh, know. It's just basically a small LCD screen, illuminated, back illuminated, and the image is projected into the eye. And each pixel in this uh, subretinal ray uh, converts pulsed light into pulsed current. Current flowing through the tissue stimulates nearby neurons. Um, so the operation is photovoltaic, so there are no wires involved. You generate current in one direction during light and then back, uh, capacitive discharge back. You stimulate in inner retina and inner retinal neurons transmit signal to ganglion cells and to the brain. Uh, in conversion of light into current, there are two limiting factors. Number of photons that corresponds to basically 0.4 ampere per watt for these wavelengths and voltage that PN junction can, uh, or photovoltaic device can generate. With a single PN junction, the voltage is limited to half a volt. With two diodes in pixel, we can double uh, the current, and uh, three diodes, we can increase it further. But the number of diodes per pixel is limited by this electrochemical safety. Uh, the electrochemical safety for water is about 1.4 volt. Beyond that, you will start generating electrolysis, oxygen and hydrogen. And that's certainly not compatible with chronic implantation. So in our pixels, we limit um, the voltage to three diodes. Therefore, the pixels are designed as three uh, photodiodes in series connected between active and return electrode. And we have three sizes, 245, 120, and 60 microns. These are, pixels are arranged in arrays. For small animals, like rats, we use 0.8 by 1.2. In large animals, we use 2 by 2 arrays. And, uh, with this uh, packing density, you can achieve several thousand pixels. Uh, pixels can be actually connected in a flexible array. If you etch uh, the array in such a way that you leave thin bridges, these bridges are flexible, and when you lift it, it actually drapes over. And if you place it in the eye, it takes a shape of an eye. And this is sclera choroid, and you can see a ray following the curvature of a pig eye. And if you zoom in, you can see RPE cells. And this is 30 micrometer thick, 75 micrometer wide pixels. In OCT, you can actually see that the array is nicely following a curvature of the pig eye. And it looks actually three times thicker because the refractive index of uh, silicon is uh, 3.4 at this wavelength. So it actually looks much thicker than it is. It is only 30 microns. It's about half of the thickness of the receptor. Uh, to check what actually retina does in response to stimulation, we use multi-electrode array. It's an array of 500 little electrodes that read signals from hundreds of ganglion cells simultaneously. And the image is projected into a subretinal array through the retina, exactly like it happens in the eye. So the light goes through the retina. Uh, photovoltaic array converts it into current. The cells are stimulated, signals transmitted into ganglion cells, and we read them out with this multi electrode array. So what you see in response to pulse of light, there is a current generated in each pixel. We pick it up as an artifact of stimulation, and then you see retinal response, which is shown here in spikes. And the number of spikes is increasing with brightness in each pixel, so we can modulate it like a normal LCD screen would do. And also it increases uh, with duration, so we can control retinal output as in DLP uh, display with the duration of the pulse on in each pixel. So the limiting factor, obviously, here is light, uh, ocular safety in this case because everything is delivered optically. So with a normal ambient light, one microwatt per square millimeter, 
Uh, we actually use much uh, brighter uh, one milliwatt per square millimeter intensity for photovoltaic stimulation, and we use near infrared light because otherwise it would be painfully bright. Uh, so our limiting factor is uh, thermal, and this, uh, at this wavelength the limits are for CW is about five milliwatt per square millimeter and pulse 200 milliwatt per square millimeter. So if you compare these limits to stimulation thresholds, you see that we have about two orders of magnitude of dynamic range. So it's quite safe. We operate two orders of magnitude below all the safety limit. Uh, we also detect signals in vivo, and it turns out that in vivo, the thresholds are even lower by approximately a factor of three. And currently, we start uh, stimulating uh, non-invasively with uh, visual work potential. Uh, recordings which will allow us to objectively determine the resolution and content sensitivity. You can see here in vivo implant in a red eye and uh, OCT image shows that it's nicely located underneath the retina. Again, it looks three times thicker. It's actually 30 microns only. And this is in the nuclear layer located right above the implant. So in summary, we avoid all the wires and deliver information optically so uh, we can scale it up to thousands of pixels. Each pixel provides localized stimulation and the uh, stimulation threshold is two orders of magnitude below damage threshold. Uh, the, because it's optical system, there is normal relationship between the direction of gaze and the signal. We just look at the basically computer uh, screen or TV screen like in video goggles. And surgery is very simple. It's just basically uh, a blab, so right now insertion and you can place multiple modules uh, to cover large field of view. Uh, so I want to thank the team that works on this uh, project uh, and funding, and thank you for your attention.